to the amazing Jimmy Dore, who I'm about to bring on to, for you all to speak about this issue. And thank you so much for, uh, for taking the time to join us today, Jimmy. Hi, how, do I have to do anything? Nope, this, it's, it's just as easy as clicking a link. I so think it's better than Skype. You can scheme yes. me and everything. I don't have to click anything else. We can just talk. Nothing else to click. We can okay. hear you and we can see you. So um, it's kind of amazing what's happening with, uh, with Julian. And it's so transparently corrupt. And everybody knows it. Uh, it's, it's uh, you know, my friend Randy Credico went to the White House Correspondence Dinner. And he stood up right before they all started giving each other blowjobs. Uh <laughs> And he said, what about Julian Assange? You know, and he started to scream about Julian Assange. And of course they cuffed him. <laughs> and in a room full, a room full of the, uh, the country's best reporters, nobody reported it. Isn't that amazing? It didn't get reported. Isn't that unbelievable? Because they would have to report what he was screaming about, which would reveal them to all be transparent hypocrites. And, Absolutely. And 100% deserving of Michelle's uh, ridicule, Michelle Wolf's ridicule. Absolutely. And instead, instead we just got uh, comments about eyeshadow and, and it was just pathetic. But I, I think it's fantastic that you brought up Randy Credico at the beginning of this, because like yourself, Randy is both a comedian and an activist. And so I, I've asked um, some other comedians like Lee Camp about their perspective on the role of comedy as activism. Do you have any thoughts on that you want to share in, in light of what WikiLeaks does as well? Well, you know, uh, the revolution can get pretty um, can get pretty pretty dour without some humor, right? So humor is fun. We just did uh, Lee taped his new special uh, a couple weeks ago here in um, was it last Saturday? Saturday before last at the El Rey Theater was uh, Abby Martin was on the show. Also, I was on the show with Lee. It was just what a great experience that is. So a room full of progressives can come together and uh, have a fun good time doing what comedy is supposed to do which is take the piss out of the elite and that's what we were doing and so you know every once in a while you got you know the chomsky taught us that the media is set up in a way to make us all think that we're the only ones thinking the thoughts we're thinking and uh, so it's good to get together and not in you know inside uh, it's good to get together wherever you can with other progressives but when it's inside of a big theater and you see holy shit there's a whole theater full of people thinking just like us uh it's it kind of gives you energy to keep going that you need so um i don't know how i got off on that but yeah no fantastic i think that's all really relevant to to the the way in which you guys seem to be able to uh break uh, through the barriers of echo chambers that maybe, you know, without that comedic aspect of it, maybe those echo chambers wouldn't be able to be sort of popped in the way that you all really effectively do. Well, you know, uh, Michelle Wolf told the truth and you would have thought that uh, she committed uh, a war crime or something, right? And uh, it's like, yeah, yeah, you guys, that's the whole court gesture thing. That's what they're about. They actually are going to hit your rights in square. In the, if they're worth a shit, they're going to, they're going to take the piss out of you. And they don't, and they all pretend, oh, it wasn't funny. It's like, you guys are all a dumb idiot. Of course it's funny. You're just so used to those uh, four corporate comedians that you have to go up against on co corporate television. People don't realize <laughs> that it's only six companies here in the United States that control all the media. And that's because of Bill Clinton. And so we were just talking today about uh, Julian Assange, that the real reason they don't like him uh, because, oh, I was interviewing a guy named Kevin Mejia, who's running for Congress, and he's uh, a Green Party. And I had to remind him that you're not per permitted to uh, engage in democracy in the United States as a third party. You're a spoiler. Uh, so, which is just such an establishment talking point, guaranteed trying to bury third parties, because that's they threaten their power. Like I tried to tell people, if everybody voted their conscience, which is what Hillary Clinton said to do, vote your conscience. She meant that only to Republicans, by the way. She didn't mean that to progressives or environmentalists, because if we voted our conscience, there's no way we could vote for a corporatist warmonger who called for the drone death of one of our leading journalists, Julian Assange. I mean, people get all worked up about Donald Trump and the way he's threatening the media like nobody else. No, he's just talking outwardly the way the government has been working internally since I can't remember. Barack Obama prosecuted more journalists with the Espionage Act than all the other presidents. 
So that everyone's pretending like things got bad because of Donald Trump. No, we got Donald Trump because things are bad. And WikiLeaks reveals that kind of shit. And that's why they don't want any, they want to uh, lock him up. And it's amazing, you know, Halliburton's getting a guy in, uh, tr installed in uh, Ecuador. Uh, he's a Halliburton guy. Uh, and, you know, the influence of the United States government and the CIA is what's making this happen. Why they have to cut off his uh, internet and why they want to arrest him, right? So, I mean, the, you, Anyway, everybody knows all this. I know I'm preaching to the choir. No, it's, it's absolutely uh, very, very relevant to everything we've, we've spoken about. And, and the other thing is that even preaching to the choir, I mean, we have we have guests and viewers that have not been watching the entire stream. So rehashing those points is absolutely valuable to everyone listening. And you mentioned Ecuador, and I was wondering if we could get your thoughts on um, on what might be Ecuador's next move, uh, or, and also uh, just your thoughts on how Ecuador has has been acting in the, in the months since they have banned Julian Assange from speaking with the outside world, including his own friends and family, and all visitors being prevented from seeing him. Well, it's just it's the opposite of what their charter is to when they protect the dissident, and you can't cut them off. And so they're doing all this thing, and it's all because of the pressure from the United States. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's super heavy. And of course, we uh, don't protect the press here in the United States. We protect the corporate mouthpieces to the, uh, to the establishment. They don't, right now, they're, you know, the new state sent, Julian Assange said in 2010, I just, that, or the video I saw of him was from 2010, when he said the new state censorship is carry, being carried out by private corporations. And that's exactly what's happening. So right now, they're trying to uh, – YouTube is owned by Google, which, correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't that invented by the CIA as a spying apparatus on our own people? And that's certainly what it's being used for. And now uh, they're throttling independent news, and they don't want people to get – that they'll never tell you the truth about war. So it's just amazing to me. We all know that – like I just saw the movie The Post – and, yes, uh, we I, mentioned that earlier. That was it's such a hypocritical uh, film that they've pu published that now with what everything they're doing to WikiLeaks. But please so finish I, your thought on that. Yeah. Well, I'm such a slow, you know, dumb thinker. Uh, I'm watching the movie and I'm loving this movie. Right. I'm loving the post. And it was one of those movies like I didn't really want it to end. I just wanted it to keep going. And of course, um, you know, as soon as I got done watching it, I was like, oh, yeah, but um the Post went on to support every war since then, and we jail our modern-day Daniel Ellsbergs, right? Chelsea Manning told the truth, Edward Snowden, and, of course, Julian Assange. And it's like, and no one talked, and I saw a panel with uh, uh, some of the actors and with Steven Spielberg, and uh, uh, the New York Times reporter was interviewing them, and, of course, nobody brought up any of that shit. I'm like, oh, my God. And so... I really lost. Tom Hanks was on that panel too. Nobody brings that shit up. So uh, that's what's left. That's why I have a show. And it's just like, you know, how people uh, turn to Jon Stewart to get the truth. <laughs> and it wasn't because Jon Stewart was an amazing journalist. It was because he was a funny comedian and journalism sucked so hard that they, the only place they could get it was from Jon Stewart. And that's the same thing with me. People... You know, my friends say to me, they go, Jimmy, how have you, what have you done? What's your secret to the popularity of your show? And I say, well, all you have to do is tell the truth about war. I'm automatically the best journalist in America because nobody on television will tell you the truth about war. In fact, they'll go along with the raping and pillaging of all the poorer countries we, inv we invade. I have a video up, Rachel Maddow literally endorses. She says, uh, she has a, a guy on from the military and says, uh, it, can we do that, though? Can we just go into Afghanistan and steal all their minerals? And he says, of course we can. We've done it before. We better do it before China does. And she's like, you know what she said back? Okay, thanks for being our guest. She said nothing. She said nothing. So, Even, by the way, yeah. you can't find that video. That's uh, They don't have that. But anyway, that's why we need truth tellers like Julian Assange. And they're afraid of him, right? And that's why CNN smears people and, and, and Google and YouTube throttle our shows is because they're afraid of us. If, they weren't, if we weren't telling a truth that was going to hurt their bottom line, 
uh, they wouldn't give a shit. They, they prop us up just as much as their cat videos, but they don't because we're telling the truth. And who doesn't want us to tell the truth? You know, it's why climate change still gets to present it as a debate. They'll bring on uh, a, a senator from Tennessee who doesn't believe. They'll bring on a scientist and they'll say, thanks for the debate. It's only a debate on your shitty news show because you're sponsored by fossil fuels. That's the only reason why you present it as a debate. And uh, and they're and every they're always for every war. I mean, you saw we all saw Brian Williams nut in his pants uh, when Trump decided to send some missiles to. And then you know what's you can tell what's the biggest neoliberal lie is that oh Trump's a madman with his finger on the nukes. And then they all vote to give him eighty billion dollars more in bombs. And then they wag their finger at him and said you better bomb Syria. And then when he does, they say you didn't do it bad enough. And it's like, oh, I thought he was a maniac. And now you guys, so you, so that's, that reveals their bullshitters. That reveals that whole thing. And Trump is going right along with them, right? He's selling all that stuff to Saudi Arabia. He's, uh, you know, he's in bed with the Likud and Dead Benton. You know, the people they colluded with wasn't Russia. The reason why General Flynn called Russia in the first place was because Netanyahu wanted him to call and get him to go along with this vote in the UN. That's who they were operating on the behalf of Israel, not Russia. And everybody who knows anything knows that, which tells you that the establishment media are all lying hacks, including everyone at MSNBC. Ed Schultz just revealed that he wasn't allowed to cover Bernie Sanders, which is why he got fired. Do you think Rachel Maddow ever mentions that on her show? Or how about Phil Donahue, who got fired when he was against the Iraq war? You think they want to have that guy on all the time because he got it right? No, they don't want to get it right. They have on Bill Kristol all the time, who got everything wrong. That's the establishment media. So when people think Rachel Maddow and Chris Hayes are somehow these bastions of liberal progressive thought, they are corporate tools, which is why they have those jobs. Go watch broadcast news. They don't hire anybody who's going to tell you the goddamn truth. That's why they have those jobs. And they're, and people go, oh, my God, but she's a homosexual. She has to be moral. <laughs> That's what people think. It's like, no, you can be an immoral gutless, spineless, complete tool of the military industrial complex and a homosexual. Incredible, incredible hypocrisy uh, from, from everyone in the legacy press. And I know that uh, as everyone, everyone watching is probably aware that Julian Assange has tweeted your work multiple, multiple times. And we all know he's a giant fan of yours. And so it's especially, especially uh, a privilege that you would be on this vigil with us. Um, you know, what, how has WikiLeaks affected your work specifically? Are there, do you, if, if WikiLeaks's work had never been published, uh, would you have been able to, to uh, reach the audience that you have? And, and if they hadn't existed, what stories wouldn't you have been able to cover? Well, I, I, I wouldn't know that Hillary Clinton campaign actually did an inter, uh, did their own internal polling and they found out that Hillary's biggest vulnerability was that uh, she signed off on the Uranium One deal and she was in bed with Russia. That was the biggest, that was her biggest vulnerability. So what do they do? Of course, they take that, they throw that on their enemy. And I wouldn't know, it was a guy named Brodick, I'll have to look at the document, who did the study. And he said, this is your biggest thing, this is your biggest vulnerability. When people find out about the Uranium One deal and Bill Clinton getting a half million dollars put in his pocket by a Kremlin bank, so that was her big vulnerability. And so, of course, they throw it out. So I wouldn't know any of that, which would, you know, I, I'm late to the game. You know, I started doing a political uh, radio show in about 2008, 2009 here in Los Angeles. And um, I was just doing it for, get, for laughs, you know. I mean, I didn't realize how messed up things were. I thought Barack Obama was president and everything's going to be okay now. So, and then it was really Barack Obama that woke me up to how unbelievably criminally corrupt uh, both parties are and uh, that we don't have civil liberties anymore. Nobody really talks about it. And we don't have freedom of the press. You have freedom of the press to say shit that they say you can say. You know, if you tell the truth about the Iraq war, they'll fire you like they did to Chris Hedges, Phil Donahue, Jesse Ventura. 
if you, uh, Ashley Banfield, you tell the truth about what you were going to get. And people don't realize that yet. They go watch the post and everybody has a dry, you know, they start tearing up and everything. And it's like, yeah, but that doesn't, it's worse now. And so I wouldn't know any of that stuff. If it was, it wasn't for, uh, and when I tell people that and I show them those documents that blows their mind. And, uh, also I wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't know all the stuff we know about the corruption and um, so it, it's, it's influenced me on, well, just the, what we know about the war that got revealed by Chelsea Manning. Right? I did a whole video on that and just researching that just blew my mind. I'm like, I guess I knew some of this stuff, but I didn't know all the war crimes they revealed. And so they should be, of course, in their time, they're never heralded as uh, heroes, right? Daniel Manning, they prosecuted him. And uh, so that, of course, but he, so, and by the way, they were the real heroes, and they, they made it out to look like the real hero was uh, uh, the owner of the paper, right? Uh, I mean, I don't know, maybe it's a, who knows, but the real hero was Daniel, was Daniel Ellsberg. What did I say, Daniel Manning? I meant Daniel Ellsberg. That's the real hero of the Washington Post story, but they make it out to be Tom Hanks, and of course, anyway, but and I'm sure Ben Bradley was a fine fellow, but he looked like more he cared about competition than anything i don't know i'm getting into a movie critique no it's totally fine I, I that's something that's a really important aspect of what we're discussing in this vigil which is that uh you know a lot of times people like daniel ellsberg they they do face so much uh pushback from the establishment as they're actually active but then a few days decades later they're held up by that same establishment as a symbol of oh this is our free democracy because we have dissidents yeah. like this and the hypocrisy of that it's i was just in oslo which of course the home of the Nobel Prize, and of course they they awarded it to Barack Obama, and then he went on to drop more bombs than George Bush did. <laughs> so that's absolutely. The difference, by the way, you pretend your human rights, and then you institute neocon agendas and overthrow leftist governments. That's the new grip. So the Oslo Freedom Forum, I figured it out in about two minutes, is a big fucking grift run by um, uh, who's that chess player? What's his name? Gary Kasparov. And this guy named Thor Halverson. And uh, these guys are just like these right wing guys. And they they started the uh, Human Rights Foundation. Oh, they just call themselves it. So now they are. And somehow they con the Norway government into giving them money, too. And so they're funded by all these right wing think tanks. It's called the Oslo Freedom Forum. And so they were talking about all these horrible abuses, you know, about Assad and Russia and Putin. And so I raised my hand because I'm a reporter at a press conference. And I said, uh, Hey, you know, uh, the United States has 5% of the world's population and it incarcerates 25% of the world's prisoners and uh, cops shoot minorities with impunity. They killed almost 1,200 people on the streets of America, which is like 10% of all our homicides committed by cops. And I said, we have a certified torturer as the head of our CIA right now. And uh, I go, do you still, when you say the free world, do you consider the United States in the free world? And I didn't get to that part of the question because they cut me off. Literally, they're like, okay, we got it. We got it. And I'm like, you got what? And uh, Gary Kasparov literally started calling me a, uh, a Putin puppet. I'm like, wow, you went there already? Like right away? Like I, could, I didn't even know I was going to call. I thought they would agree with me and go, yeah, it's fucked up in the United States. They go, especially now they hate Trump. They would go, oh, Bob, they don't hate Trump, right? See, they're really fucking neocons. And uh, they support the fucking fascists and you can So that's the new grift, just so everyone knows. The new grift is to pretend you're a human rights organization and you use real human rights workers in those. Like they'll have people from China. and stuff. But guess what? There's no one there from Libya. I was like, why isn't there anyone here? Why aren't you guys talking about fucking Libya or Iraq? Or why are you talking about Palestine? Gaza? they didn't talk about any of that shit. And Gary Kasparov said he, his big thing was, I grew up in a communist country. Don't you tell me. Uh, but I'm like, yeah, don't. I'm not telling you what it's like to live in Russia. I'm telling you what it's like in the United fucking States. OK, and don't you tell me, you stupid chess player, about what it's like to live in my country. You're dismissing Black Lives Matters and civil rights. You're dismissing everything. And he said, and if you want to get rid of Trump, you can vote him out. I go, we already did. Three million more people voted against him and we got him anyway. What kind of democracy is that? 
And so anyway, they were shouting me down the whole time. Human Rights Freedom Forum about human rights, except you can't bring up the United States, Israel, Palestine, or, or the, you know, the United, and they're all about, we're talking about dictators. And I said, the United States supports 73% of the world's dictators, okay? So anyway, that's the new grift. And Julian Assange, we need him around to expose things like that. Absolutely. And it reminds me as well, uh, the way that the human rights organizations will name themselves an ironic, uh, t- give themselves an ironic title like that. It takes uh, takes us back as well to like the, the names of these laws that are enacted for the exact opposite of what they say. And a previous guest mentioned it, specifically the Patriot Act being the exact opposite of yes. patriotism. So you see that's this all or- over. Yeah, that's that. Or I mean, uh, yeah, that's that Orwell thing. And we're living in it. And you know what's just weird to me? It's just like... Uh, Every time there's a leader you think is going to break through, they end up selling us out like Barack Obama. He had his big organization of people. He had all these online activists waiting to be told what to do, and he disbanded them. That also got revealed. That got disbanded because he was thought they were uncontrollable. And, of course, he's there to do the bidding of the establishment. You know, people don't realize that Barack Obama took us from two wars to seven. He made the banks bigger. His entire cabinet came from an email from Citigroup that got revealed also. I don't know, did Julian Assange reveal that? Who revealed that? I believe that was revealed by WikiLeaks. I, I remember, I think it was the Podesta emails possibly I mean, that that came then, from. And then uh, Barack Obama opened up the Arctic to drilling whenever Shell all asked him, which was twice. So this idea uh, that Trump, they, and they want everybody to think that Trump is the problem instead of Trump is the problem this, that the system brought us. It's the system that's the problem. And that's why, you know, when I lost, I, I, I ran for a uh, student body president when I was in high school. When I lost, I didn't blame another school. Okay. And that's what the Democrats, they're blaming another country. No, the problem's right here in our country. And don't, you would think they would want to change the electoral college, the Democrats, because in this century alone, 40% of the, uh, of the ele- elector, um, uh, presidential elections have gone to the loser, right? 40% in this century alone. You would think that they never talk about switching that up, which by the way, the electoral college was a, was a, uh, what, what do you call a bargain? It was a negotiation that for with for slavery. That's how we got the electoral college, right? So that's what it's weird that you have. They go, well, Jimmy, if you get rid of the electoral college, then everybody on the coast will get to pick the president. Yeah, you should be able to pick the president with the people's popular vote. That's how it works. And if you want to go live where no one lives, that's up to you. You still get to vote. Anyway, I, we're getting off on tangents. I'm no. Uh, no, uh, your reporting on all of these issues has been absolutely incredible, and it's something that I think a lot of people value as one of the few strong voices that can really take uh, take the establishment to task. I think that uh, you know, uh, along with uh, everything that the the persecution that WikiLeaks is experiencing, I think that you see the establishment media really panicking at their inability, to, even with all the censorship, to shut you all down. And so, I, but I was wondering, um, but in, in moving topics a little bit, I wanted to ask you about uh, personally, what woke you up and also what, what motivates you not only to speak out on what you see as the truth, but to support WikiLeaks specifically and to support Julian Assange in his, uh, in, in supporting, uh, restoring Julian Assange's human rights. I mean, you know, um, to me, WikiLeaks, is Daniel Ellsberg, you know, and I'm anti-war. And so, you know, when Chelsea Manning uh, revealed the war crimes of our government, you you know, the only person ever in prison for the torture scandal was the guy who revealed it, John Kiriakou. That's that's just, you know, I can't write jokes that good. And I'm a professional comedian with Comedy Central specials. I mean, that's fantastic. And you tell, I was telling this to a guy last night at, and he couldn't, he, they don't believe you when you tell them this thing. They, they don't, like, what are you talking? And so and they don't believe that the CIA spied on the committee that was investigating them for torture, which is also treason. And then it's just amazing how the left has been so, tra- it's worse than Orwell because the left now was the one pushing uh, McCarthyism and groupthink. And it's, and, that, and so to me, Julian Assange is an antidote to that stuff because he reveals the truth. Again, uh, the problem with Julian Assange is he's not funny. 
because uh, as Ox, I think it was Oscar Wilde said, if you're going to tell people the truth, make them laugh or they'll kill you. So now that's why everybody wants to kill him because he's telling the truth without jokes around me. And I try to, that's why I try to pep it up with some uh, punchlines because I'm trying to save my neck. Well, I think that that is an uh, unfortunately really true point. And uh, I, I, I know that um, as we've been watching um, the development since Julian Assange has been silenced, um, you know, we've seen, as we mentioned before, the oscillation with Ecuador back and forth. Um, what did you make of the specific attacks uh, we saw from The Guardian uh, when they published multiple different smear pieces against Julian within a couple of days? I mean, look what they, did. they did the same. They do the same thing. The Jeremy Corbyn and Bernie Sanders. They do the same shit. They're all part of that same big corporalist gangbang, baby, uh, capitalist gangbang, and that's what this, this is all about. They're all owned by the fucking establishment that he's exposing. That's so. That's what the, I had something else I wanted to tell you, and I goddamn forgot about it. But um, oh, what did I want to say anyway? Ah, go ahead. Ask me another question. Or maybe I, I think I'm looking through chat right now to see what questions we have. Uh, so somebody asked, with the system targeting Julian Assange, Edward Snowden, Susie Dawson, and so many other targeted individuals, do you want to give more power to the system that targets? Um, I'm not sure who he, that uh, viewer is directing the question to, but I think it could be reworded in the sense of how do you take the power away from that system that is targeting so many whistleblowers, activists, journalists, and obviously Julian Assange. You know, I wish, I, I knew, you know, people smarter than me are called, you know, you have to have direct act. People got out in the streets and then they didn't have, they didn't have a, any, it was all just displeasure with Trump instead of displeasure with the system that gave us Trump. And so you're gonna need people to get out on the streets, but for the, but with an idea of what they're doing. So that was just controlled opposition, that women's march and all that stuff. That's just controlled opposition. That's just pretending that Trump is the problem instead of the symptom of the problem, which he definitely is a symptom. Oh, I know I wanted to say. So imagine how badly they want to get Julian Assange. Just imagine right now the United States is spending on their military 40 percent more than they were spending at the height of the Iraq war. That's how much more we went from 500 billion a year to 700 billion. Right now, that's what's happening. He is going to expose all that shit. And a, just imagine how, I mean, what people will do for $100,000. Imagine what they'll do for $100 million. This is talking about $700 billion a year, almost a trillion dollars. And it's all privatized. War is all privatized. I've been to Afghanistan. It's all privatized, right? They have all the Halliburton and all these pri private contractors making your beds and serving you this and doing the laundry. And the, and the soldiers just sit there with a rifle in their hand all day. And uh, and then half of those are motion. Anyway, it's all been corporatized. So there's a death economy. And that, imagine the pressure. Imagine what people would do for $700 billion. They'll do, uh, well, they'll kill journalists and pretend that they're not. They'll imprison journalists. They'll smear them. I know what it's like. I just told a little truth about a gas attack in Guta, and uh, uh, I got smeared in CNN by that. I All I did was ask a question. All I did was ask a question about a murder investigation in Washington, D.C., and I got smeared in the Washington Post. So, uh, so those guys, by the way, Jeff Bezos uh, has a $600 million deal with the CIA to store all our data that's being surveilled, uh, you know, unconstitutionally. And so the richest guy in the world also owns the paper of notes where you're not allowed to criticize him because when someone did criticize him, a writer for the Washington Post, he got disciplined because he wrote an article in the Huffington Post and they said, you're doing it for a competitor. Where the fuck's he going to write it? Where's he going to put it? His criticism of the way Amazon treats people. So uh, it, it, and the guy looks like Dr. Evil and nobody has a problem with any of this, right? Everyone think they, they go, oh my God, Jeff Bezos, what an, ama what an amazing CEO. It's what a visionary, what a, no, what a, what a narcissistic megalomaniac because what kind of a person accused more wealth than any other person in the history of the world while at the same time the people who generate that income are urinating into bottles that are on food stamps? I tell you, a sociopathic megalomaniac, that's who does that. And that's who Jeff Bezos is. You know, they've done studies 
that people who become wealthy and millionaires, they lose empathy. That, and they also lose the ability to read the cues in other people's faces, their emotions. That's a fact that's been studied. I'm not making that up. So, Jeff, those people are sociopaths. We are just pawns to them. That's all. We are just ones and zeros. And war is an economy for people. It's a death economy. So, I, I, right that, now, No, that's a major point. Major, right major now, point. The United States is helping Yemen commit war crimes in uh, 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 helping Saudi Arabia commit siege warfare in Yemen, which, by the way, is a war crime. You're not allowed to do siege warfare, and that's what they're doing. They just convicted somebody in the world court from uh, uh, Yugoslavia, who I forget. Anyway, they just convicted somebody about doing siege warfare. We're doing it right now, but of course, Mike makes right, and we'll never be convicted of anything. Exactly. And speaking of just Jeff Bezos, as you were just a second ago, um, right around the time that you did your reporting, especially on the hypocrisy of the Washington Post censoring its own authors in that way, I noticed that uh, we were in the period between uh, Gina Haspel had not been anywhere near, uh, nom uh, you know, kind of her name wasn't being thrown around as, as a potential uh, CIA director. And there were actually news outlets that, not, that, that called for Jeff Be Bezos to be the next CIA director. I mean, uh, yeah, so so that that is the level that we're dealing with. So I just did a, a found a um, Council on Foreign Relations had a panel and it was hosted by a former Time magazine editor. And uh, he admitted that he likes propaganda and he thinks that government should be doing propaganda on their own people. That was the guy the editor of Time magazine. Incredible. So, uh, Again, um, it's worse than people think. Why do we think we have the? Why do you think we have the richest country in the world and sixty-four percent of the people can't afford a thousand-dollar emergency? The richest country in the world—that's called a failed system. That's not all. Sixty-four percent of the country's lazy. That's the failed system that doesn't know. You know, Jack Ma, who search, to tell you the truth, he's he's the Jeff Bezos of Asia, right? He runs their uh, Amazon. Uh, why am I? It's called Alibaba, I think. And so he was asked at a tech conference, you know, what's the matter with the United States? He says, you guys don't have a, you don't have a problem making money. You guys have all the money. He says, you just don't distribute it. You know, he said these when you ship a job to China, that helps an American company. They now make more money. But where does that money go? It doesn't go to anybody in the country. It doesn't trickle down. We all know trickle down economic does not work. It goes to an offshore bank account. And uh, it gets it stagnates the economy. This is our system. He said, "This isn't the China system. This is a system thought up by the United States. The idea to send our jobs there to slave labor. That's our idea. Our corporations. We have our legislatures, pa legislators pass laws to give a tax break if a corporation does that. That's the kind of corruption we're living in. And that's why Bernie Sanders was so popular. And why is it every time we get a popular leader, they sell us out? Bernie Sanders." is now pushing for incrementalism. He's working inside the Democratic Party. A revolution would be a third party that crushes the Democrats, which is what he could do. He's the most popular politician in the country. If he starts a third party, it automatically becomes the most popular party in the No, the majority of people are now registered independents. 25% of the country calls themselves Democrats. 26 calls themselves Republicans. This is what we're left with. Other countries have four, five, six parties, and we're only allowed two. That's a bullshit lie, and I'm sure we need people like Julian Assange to reveal that stuff. It's so – the corruption inside – the biggest electoral fraud that has ever happened in America happened in the Democratic primary. Absolutely. And, and of course, they're going to talk about Russia. So that's – it's just disheartening. I never, I never thought I would live through McCarthyism. I saw movies about it, Good Night and Good Luck. But where's George Clooney to fucking talk about it? He's not talking about it. They all go along with the neoliberal bullshit. And when George Clooney was doing three hundred thousand uh, dollar plate dinner fundraisers for Hillary Clinton, he got called on and he said, "No, most of that money's going to down ticket." Well, because of uh, was it because of WikiLeaks? It revealed that no, that money didn't go down ticket. It all went to the Hillary Clinton fund. So this is why they want to kill him. This is why they want to imprison him. This is why they slander him because he tells the truth to the powerful. I wouldn't tell that much truth if I was him. I'm not that courageous. You know, I really just wanted to be a popular comedian. And it's just like the people are like, why you do this? Because no one else is fucking doing it. That's why I do Absolutely. it. I don't want to do this shit. I wish those assholes at CNN would tell the truth. I wish Rachel Maddow would tell the truth about war. They're not going to do it.
So that's why I'm doing it. It's incredible that you bring up that message because that's what we've heard from people like John Kiriakou who've been on the stream as well, that they they wanted somebody else to do this, that they but they realized at some point, and, and we've talked about this multiple times in the stream, that people realize nobody else is going to do this, so I have to. And how do you think that uh, the audience, when they realize that nobody else, not even us, can can by ourselves, you know, create a movement that will force the establishment to uh, reconnect Julian or to free him, what can they do to make a difference in this situation and really actually make a tangible difference? You know, uh, I don't know. I feel like it's, you know, when, hey, what can I do to try to stop the Iraq war? What can I do to try to stop uh, Wall Street? It's like we try everything and uh, we have these uh, we have these wolf and sheep clothing as leaders. You know, Barack Obama let the cops crack the heads of peaceful protesters across the country as they... Uh, you know, kicked 5.1 million families out of their houses and made the banks whole. It's pretty discouraging. I'm not smart enough to know. Like I said, uh, like I list, I just read an article by Chris Hedges, and you know, he he's hinting at we need a real revolution. So um, you know, that the very least, people in the streets. So we need a Martin Luther King. But of course, every time one of those guys come along, they just kill him, right? Look at what they're doing to Julian right now. So that's the problem. Like they killed, JFK said he wanted to smash the CIA into a thousand pieces. They killed him. And then, so there was uh, Malcolm X. As soon as he figured out that the game was being played on both races, they killed him. Uh, Martin Luther King, as soon as he turned against the war and started the poor people's campaign, they killed him. Uh, and Robert F. Kennedy, as soon as he was going to end the war, they killed him, right? So uh, Sirhan, Sirhan's gun, I think, only had eight bullets. I think they found nine or 10 or 11 bullets. Anyway, um, so that's the problem. But we need leaders. And Bernie Sanders um, is, could be that guy. I urge him to run third party. He's going to run inside the party. Uh, I think it's a big missed opportunity. And, um, you know, I certainly support his agenda, but... You know, him saying that he was for revolution turns out to be not intellectually honest. Yeah, it, it was def it definitely the the pre-convention Bernie versus post-convention Bernie, I think, has left a lot of people confused uh, from his from his support base as to, to what to think of him uh, these days. And I hope as well that he comes out in support of Integrity and Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. Um, well, it, you know, it's asking him to, you know, he does a lot, I guess. It's almost like he made a deal like, hey, I'll let my foreign policy suck if you guys let me talk about income inequality. And uh, although he has spoken out on pa Palestine and Gaza, so that's good to see. And he did vote against the Russia sanctions, if I'm correct. So although he has, you know, repeated, uh, parroted the Russiagate thing saying it's serious, instead of revealing that it's uh, a big distraction from an autopsy that's not being performed on our capitalistic system that renders half the country poor, low income, uh, tens of thousands of people die from lack of health care. You know, ICE, everyone's screaming in America right now about the way we're, the barbarism in uh, the way Trump's treating immigrants, ripping six-year-old kids who are blind away from their parents, and uh, worse, things even worse than that. And, uh, you know, uh, of course, the story that's not being told is that uh, that was created ICE. We didn't need this organization to do that. It was created by George Bush with the help of the Democrats, and it was expanded under Barack Obama. And Barack Obama uh, deported more people than all the presidents combined. So now that Trump's doing it, people have a chance to see how horrible it is. And so now maybe people will rise up against the system instead of rise up against a person. But they're being distracted, again, by rising up against a person. So I, I wish we knew, I, what do you think we should do to, to help Julian Assange? Tell me, I'll do it. Uh, well, I, I cannot speak for anyone individually, and you have a unique tool of, with your platform and your audience to absolutely, um, you know, are, it, that is a unique tool. But I think in general, uh, what people have to do is evaluate honestly what their own talents and, and uh, skills and tools available to them are. And every single person is going to have a different situation. And whatever uh, you know, natural gift you have, re-engineer it creatively in order to work for Julian Assange. You know, it doesn't have to be 
um, a large voice on social media. It can be as simple, I mean, literally as simple as doing a painting and tagging WikiLeaks Art Force or, uh, you know, raising funds through something as simple as a, a garage sale and donating it to WikiLeaks. Do whatever is uh, at your, um, you know, is uh, w what you're able to do. But the ACLU has actually come out in defense of uh, Julian Assange, right? So you can send that article around. I saw that. I think I saw an AP article about that. Someone else just came out. There's another big article. I Maybe I retweeted it. That's about uh, uh, people are warning about, you know, this is really, a, you know, you're setting a bad precedent here with Julian Assange. Like, hey, uh, you might not like what he said. Uh, you might think he's uh, working with foreign governments or whatever. But all he's really done is re reveal the truth. And, uh, you know, it's like a joke my friend used to have. He goes, oh, this guy's such an asshole. I go, why would he do? He's running around telling everybody the truth about me. And that's Julian Assange, right? So um, uh, now I lost my train of thought because I told a joke. See, I told a joke. And I forget my train of thought. Not a problem at all. And, and uh, oh, no, uh, go article, ahead. People who have come out to support it. That's a big deal. I think that. And then once people. So nobody has heard the counter narrative to what people are saying about everybody just goes, oh, Julian Assange. I remember I was on a panel at the Young Turks and I forget who it was. Somebody was on there and said about Julian Assange, they go, that guy's a dick. And I go, what? Like, what? Why did he print a lie or something? And they're like, no. And I go, what did he do? He goes, I could just tell that guy's a dick. I'm like, this is your criticism on a news panel? And uh, I'm like, tell me what he printed that was untrue. I mean, you should be thinking. They should be built. Well, you know what they do? Have, don't they have a, a – in Berlin, of all places, isn't it? Don't they have a statue to Julian Assange, Chelsea Manning, and Daniel uh, – uh, what's his name? Daniel Ellsberg, I think. Daniel – no, just Edward Snowden. That's right. Yes, right. that's so they a great have, yeah. statue. Yeah, so that's the kind of things we should be doing here in America. But, of course, we only give lip service to freedom and democracy. It's, uh, it's all the freedom and democracy the corporation's allowing you to have. Absolutely. And I guess one, the one positive, as, you, as you've said, uh, is that possibly the backlash from the current gagging of Julian Assange will help uh, raise impetus for freeing him and showing the hypocrisy of his treatment as a journalist. Because I, I, I agree, I've seen the articles that you're referencing that have come out even just a little bit in support of Julian Assange since uh, he has been silenced. So that is at least one positive uh, outcome, yeah. sort of. <laughs> If they treat Julian Assange like they handle everything else, they'll overreach, right? I mean, for Christ's sake, we're still in Afghanistan, just like Osama bin Laden wished we would uh, overreach. So they're going to overreach and, uh, you know, do things that are criminal and then will be revealed. Um, they've already done things that are criminal, I'm sure. Well, first of all, the whole FISA courts of one big criminal organization, which Bill William Binney you know, revealed on my show, which was just mind blowing. William Binney, which was the top NSA code breaker, and uh, he, in anyway, they made a uh, oh Oliver, they made a documentary about him called The Good American. Everybody should see that. But anyway, um, uh, I, I, I'm optimistic. I think that um, if the ACLU is on Julian Assange's side, I think that actually will make a big difference because the ACLU, because of Trump got a big infusion of cash this year or last year. Remember that? They got like $25 million overnight, like the biggest fundraiser ever in the history of the. So people, the, the fear of Trump gave the ACLU more like credibility and more, and certainly more resources. And if they're on his side, I think that, uh, I think it'll work out for him. And um, you know, what's funny. It's like, I, I don't understand. Well, they co-opted Trump already. You know, he went in as an anti-interventionist and they, you know, the CIA, you know, Chuck Schumer revealed that the CIA controls our politicians. He did that on the Rachel Maddow show. He said, you know, I wouldn't mess with our intelligence community because they have six ways of Sunday to mess with you back. I'm like, so you're telling the president of the United States to fear a permanent state of unelected officials. That's who you want running the country. Yeah, because the, and it was like his hatred of Trump let the truth slip out. And that's what's called a gaffe. Whenever the truth slips out in Washington, D.C. And Chuck Schumer did that. He let them. He revealed that. Anyway, I can talk all day about this, but I think it will work out. The ACLU is on his side. Um, now we just like, you know, people like um, 
William Kunstler is dead. I'm thinking of the other guy who defended OJ, uh, Alan Dershowitz. So now Alan Dershowitz, <clears throat> who a lot of people find reprehensible for different reasons, um, he's, I, you know, he's right on the law. He's like, you can't let your hate, like what we say on my show, is you can't let your hate for, for Trump steal your critical thinking skills. And he kind of says the same thing about Trump is like, you can't bend the law for Trump because now we're not a democracy. You, know, you, you can't. So uh, I don't I don't know if he's sincere about that or whatever, but on the face, it looks like it. And that's how I feel. Uh, also, it's like, hey, because we have a distaste for Trump, uh, we can't now let our intelligence agency commit crimes because of it. Right. And we can't let our our, our news, age, our, the whole culture push a false narrative about Russia. You know, they want the military industrial complex really did capture our government. You know, Eisenhower wasn't fucking around when he said, beware of the undue influence of the military industrial complex. This is really happening and we're in permanent war. And so, and that's why Julian Assange is such a threat. So I, you know, I, I don't see the ACLU. That's the one organization I don't see turning. So I think they'll always have Julian Assange and, you know, presidents come and go and uh, things happen. So I, I think it'll actually work out for him in the end. But, you know, you have to stay vigilant and you have to, you know, pass those articles around, open people's minds. Absolutely. And I remember that just before Julian Assange uh, was silenced, I remember that he was uh, tweeting a lot of articles that actually talked about what you just brought up as far as the CIA directly being involved with politics, because it was re reported by the World Socialist website that a, a lot of former uh, military intelligence oh. veterans were running for Congress. And that was incredible. And a story that he he sort of uh, Wrote, uh, brought to public attention before he so was So I also did a video on that. And the reason why, first, first I saw, so someone sent me that article and I read it and I was like, I don't have time to check all these facts. And it comes from a website I'm not familiar with. Then Julian Assange tweeted, and I was like, oh, it's good. I knew it was good. So they said, hey, who double check? I go, Julian Assange did. He already tweeted this out. So I know it's good. So he helped me out a lot there, did a lot of work for me that I didn't have to do. And so that message got out to a lot of people because of him. Absolutely. And that's the type of voice that we're missing right now. And that's, um, it's, and in that way, it's really obvious that it's not only Julian Assange and WikiLeaks that suffers, it's the public and the public's, uh, you know, ability to access important information because Julian is really unique in being able to um, bring issues and stories to the public attention that otherwise would not get any sort of notice, whether it's the story about the CIA's involvement in running for Congress or whether it's, you know, the Catalonian self-determination issue. There are there are subjects that if uh, Julian Assange is not allowed to speak, will just not get any sort of public notice. And uh, yeah. They also didn't want him reporting the truth about, uh, you know, Spain and what was happening. I mean, that was a big, that was a big deal because that could really F up the economic, uh, you know, the European Union and all. There's all the that was a big deal, bigger deal than people thought. Like, again, like, it's just amazing to see him just keep pissing off the most powerful people in the world. It's just like, he has more balls than I do. You know, I pick my battles. I still want to be able to travel and have a nice life. <laughs> I feel like I fucking put my paid my dues as an on the road comic for 30 years. So I would like to relax a little, but I can't because again, no one else is doing this shit, right? No one else will tell you the truth about war. And when I meet people, I do live events all the time. And, you know, people come up to me with tears in their eyes and they hug me. And, you know, this whole family from Iran came up and these young girls were crying and they were just saying, thank you for telling people the truth about what the United States has done to Iran. And, you know, you're right. No one else is going to say that. Hey, they did have a democratically elected president, Mossadegh, and the CIA overthrew him. Why? Because he wanted to spread democracy around the Middle East. And the CIA is afraid of democracy because they're messy and you can't control them. So that's why they've been pushing friggin' Wahhabism and dictators. And they put the, then they put the Shah in, who was an oppressive dictator. And the response to that was uh, Ayatollah Khomeini. That's how we got the Ayatollah Khomeini. Not because those people are maniacs, but because, again, the CIA went in there in the United States and they overthrew that government. Why? Because he wanted to spread democracy and keep the natural resources for his people. So if there's a Marine somewhere, I would start digging because there's oil or there's a banana. There's a natural resource 
that there's an American corporation wants to get their hands on because that's what it's all about. Absolutely. And that, I think that your insight on that is exactly one of the reasons that uh, Julian Assange tweets your work so often is you are willing to call out that truth in the sense of anti-war and the reality of the history behind so many of these wars that were started on lies. And to go to your point uh, you made earlier about uh, the ACLU uh, backing Julian Assange, I know as well that, um, that WikiLeaks has recently tweeted uh, a call to action for people to actually petition and send letters to every single uh, human rights organization and NGO um, that they can think of in order to support Julian because it is so such a travesty that they have not come out in his support prior to this. So I, I just, uh, I, I don't know if you have a comment on that, but it's definitely something I yeah. want our viewers well, I, to know about. I sent a letter to the humanitarians over at the White Helmets and they haven't replied back yet. Now, I'm, I'm genuinely surprised about that. I can't imagine why they wouldn't be backing Julian Assange. Uh, but uh, so I don't know if, if you have any sort of, um, you know, overall overarching thoughts on, on Julian Assange's, uh, you know, situation right now. Anything that you want to uh, talk about that we haven't covered yet? Uh, just anything at all? About no, just, I, you know, people when they talk, they, you know, people should ask their friends about, hey, did you see the post? And if they say yes, said you know now we imprison all those guys like Julian Assange. Do you know that we do? We tortured Chelsea Manning because they revealed war crimes. The same shit's going on, and but now we're and we're still jailing people like that and trying. So that 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 I think that's a real useful tool, and it may, would make people hopefully and realize that every newspaper, including the Washington Post, is a hundred percent for war, and always will be. Right. That that's what this is really coming down to. It's this this perverse uh, war machine that the West has, has put up. Uh, it's this economic power, 700 billion. You know it takes $20 billion to end homelessness in the United States. It takes $33 billion to end world hunger. They just voted to give $80 billion more in bombs to Trump. They could have ended homelessness. They could have ended world hunger. They did, it's a decision. Right. So these people are, again, like I showed you the studies, the more money you have, the less empathy you have, the less. And so these they, people become sociopaths. And now we're being run. Our country is being run by sociopaths, which is why they can rip people away from their uh, kids, away from their parents at the border who are fleeing fucking wars that were fun fueling, by the way. You know, it's the biggest irony was when Trump did the Muslim ban. Um, people at the air, people went to the airports. Was like they're outraged. I'm like, why do you think the fucking refugees are at the airport? Because Barack Obama has been bombing them for seven straight goddamn years. So you're okay with bombing them, but just don't ban them. It does Barack Obama have to bomb the airports for people to get pissed off? Yes, apparently that's how. But you can't blame Americans because their news media sucks so hard. They'll never tell them the truth about that stuff. Barack Obama had a kill list an extrajudicial kill list, and nobody seemed to have a problem with that. He suspended habeas corpus, which is kind of the linchpin of democracy, habeas corpus, which was in the Magna Carta, for F's sake. So now they've repealed the Magna Carta, Barack Obama, and we're operating on a liberty view somewhere around the 1100s. And nobody has a goddamn problem with that in America. And all they have to do is say you're a terrorist and you don't get right to a uh, speedy trial. They can lock you up without ever charging you, which of course is the tool of tyrants, which is why they have habeas corpus in the fucking Magna Carta. Absolutely. And and to, to speak to that, I think it's, and going back to your uh, commentary on the post, I believe uh, one of our earlier panelists pointed out that Daniel Ellsberg has come out and said that if he were uh, to do what he, he has done uh, in this day and age, that he would not be able to, uh, to publish the documents that he did, that he, he that he would have been, uh, that he, it would have been impossible. It would have been fake news. First of all, they would sm smear him as the fake news conspiracy. He's a conspiracy theorist. He thinks that uh, the, we, the, that Saddam doesn't have WMDs. <laughs> you know, the biggest conspiracy theory was the Iraq war. That was a conspiracy to commit an illegal war. And what did they do? They ordered war crimes, not to end the war, but to cover the war up. It's just, Absolutely. and nobody got prosecuted for it. No, but, and that's why we have a, you know, the reason why you prosecute a crime is to punish the people, but also to deter it from happening again. And the fact that Barack Obama did not 
punish anyone who committed war crimes and torture. Guarantees will happen in the future. And now the head of our intelligence community is a verified torturer. Meanwhile, John Kiriakou, who blew the whistle on it, was the one that went to jail as we uh, or prison. As and again, I'm sure if you told the truth about that on MSNBC, they'd fire you. So people need to realize that Chris Hayes, Rachel Maddow, fake tough guy Lawrence O'Donnell are just that. Bought and paid for. They make $30,000 a day. People don't realize how much money that is. $30,000 a day, I would say the shit they are saying. No problem. It's just that nobody's making those offers to me. So I get to tell the truth. But as soon as I'm making $30,000 a day, don't fucking listen to me. Uh, I, I, I can, uh, I can guarantee that our audience will never stop listening to you. Cause I know that every, si the chat right now is just filled with how much they support and appreciate your presence here in this vigil. And, and it really truly is a privilege to have you here with us and to, to have spent this time from your busy, busy schedule, uh, to speak about Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. Nothing more and important than Julian Assange right now. He's the last truth teller we have. So, well, there's a few. John Pilger, uh, you know, is fantastic. Uh, I, uh, there's lots of people you can find on the Internet, but nobody, uh, you know, has the uh, – I'm not a journalist like Julian Assange. I'm just a, a late-night jag-off comedian who has a bullshit detector. But Julian's actually an intellectual, and he knows what he's doing. I don't. So, you know, I'm not a reputable person. He is. So it's important that we, we, is, we support him and his work. And, uh, you know, he was at that fake freedom forum, I think, in 2010. And then he started telling the truth about the Clintons and the establishment and the neoliberals. And they don't like that shit, man. They don't like that shit. And so they didn't even mention him this year. Right, Steph? They, right. they didn't mention Julian Assange at the freedom forum. No, they didn't fucking not mention him. Not, not a, a forum about it. No, nothing. Not even a forum about it at the freedom forum. It's to talk about our, the biggest dissident in the world right now. And it's just so plain to see, right? And of course, they keep to. Hey, did you see that uh, that journalist who got killed in the Ukraine, and then all of a sudden he wasn't killed anymore? I mean, because these guys they're getting so bad, they're so sloppy at it, right? And uh, and the Skripals, by the way, they got they got poisoned with stuff that's ten times worse than any other poison, but they made a nice recovery. You know, I've had hangovers last longer than those guys were sick. It's amazing. So. Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, and people fall for that shit because it's ubiquitous. And just like Chomsky told us, they do that. Because, so they, they don't want you to think other people are thinking like we are. And Julian Assange reminds us, no, there's lots of people who think like we do. And there's lots of people who are hungry for the actual truth. And they don't believe the book. It's just amazing. You know, uh, George Bush is a war crimer who lied us into wars. Yet he gets to go on Ellen DeGeneres show and nobody brings that shit up. No, in fact, he's he's canonized. He's he's like the 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 great uh, grandfather or uncle to the media. They they seem to love him. Even the the supposed liberals do. It's oh, ridiculous. Yeah, supposed. There none. There's no liberals in the establishment media. If, if you ever saw that movie broadcast news, you see how they we they get. It's just like you know police departments in the United States. It's not that bad people join the force, which also happens, but it's a culture. And you either change to the culture or you get the F out. It's the same thing with establishment media. You either bend to the culture or you get the, you know, there was a guy on MSNBC. Uh, so was it Hugh Hewitt or Charlie? Somebody was on a radio show with Trump in Wisconsin and they held his feet to the fire and they made him answer questions. And it was all the news that day. And so I'll never forget, they're interviewing the MSNBC reporter who's covering the Trump campaign. And they go, how come more reporters don't do that? Why don't they hold his feet to the fire? And he admitted, he goes, well, because he's just doing one interview. That guy, that radio guy in Wisconsin doesn't have to get in. He goes, that's just a one and done. We have to keep getting access. So we don't have the luxury, the luxury of asking him follow up. So he just revealed the game. The game is access journalism. And that's what they practice. So you either bend to that, which means Chuck Todd also admitted it on his own show. I don't know if you, I have a video about that. He had on Lewis Black on his show, Kamal Bell, and another comedian. And, they, and he said, you know, you, you can't fart too much because, you know, you, you have to think about rebooking. He admitted it. It's like you're not, that's, you're not supposed to be in the game of making friends as a journalist. They're supposed to fear you when they see you and hate you. That's called being a journalist. But what these guys are goddamn entertainers. They're narcissists, which is why they do what they do. 
and, and I, I am too, but for whatever reason, no one's paying me that kind of money. So I get to be a narcissist who tells the truth. Well, and, and speaking of, of the work that you do, I know that you have an incredibly busy schedule and you've been so generous to give us this much of your time to speak. Hey, thank you for having me. Go Julian Assange. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I hope that you'll be able to join us again in future vigils that we have on, uh, on a monthly basis. Okay, I hope thank I didn't you. talk too much and bump too many guests. Not at all. Not at all. Thank you again okay. for joining us. Bye-bye. Thanks for doing this. Bye.